So again, thank you for having me. I always love speaking with you guys, and it's great to see everyone again. Especially great to see Linda and Charles. I haven't seen either of you since last July, so really good to see you. Um, I'm going to approach this a little bit differently this time, uh, and by that I mean a couple of the tips that I'm going to share um, are little problems that I had with the Mac, little things that I encountered and I was trying to find solutions for. And as I found the solutions, I just added them to my Mac OS gems list that I was keeping just for you, just for SP mug. I had a little list. And as I solved these problems, I added these to the list. And so I thought those would be fun to, to add here. Um, and I'll point those out as I get to them. And I also brought along a tip that I've shared with you previously, and I have an update to. And I brought a couple traditional tips as well. So I, I've, I've mentioned this in the past. One of the things about me is I just love answering questions. I love solving people's problems. And it's part of the reason that um, I do this kind of thing. It's part of the reason I, I started for Mac Eyes Only, my podcast, unbelievably 18 years ago, it, the whole reason was I kept getting questions from people about Macs and Mac OS and OS 10 and how to solve this problem and that problem. And I was already doing another podcast and I thought, well, why don't I do a podcast about this? That would be a lot of fun. And uh, that's the whole reason for Mac guys only exists. And by extension, it's the whole reason Mac stock exists. I I just love this stuff so much, especially the weirder the problem, the better. So I just wanted to mention that. Now, this talk isn't going to cover any one thing in depth. Um, that's not really the point. It's just kind of to highlight some of my favorite little tidbits that I've found, or the, as I mentioned, the solutions that I found that make the Mac work better for me. Uh, and as before, I always mention this, as before, some of you are going to know a few of these things. Uh, some of you won't know any of them. Um, and uh, if there's anybody who knows all of them, let me know. Because I certainly didn't know all of these until I started keeping my list. Um, so if everyone is ready, I'll go ahead and get started. And uh, what I'm going to get started with here is a follow-up on, I think it was last time, I think it was the last time I did this uh, uh, talk for you guys. I mentioned uh, the the little tip of inserting a signature into preview. And, uh, you know, I showed you how you could scan your signature with your camera and it would be added to preview and it would be there for inserting your signature into future documents. Uh, so this is a, a, a little follow up to it, but it's also a problem I had to solve because I had a signature I wanted to enter into a preview document, but I didn't necessarily want it to always be there. I didn't want it to always be in the markup tools. And I know you can delete them, but I thought certainly I can just drag and drop the signature into there. So that's where things get weird. So what I'm gonna do is uh, first, I'm going to switch to full screen over here. And I promise I'll get closer in the document in just a moment. Um, this is the this is the document in question. It's just a simple little preview document. It's a test document I put together. But what I want to do is I want to insert a signature into this. And using the tip I talked about last time, I can just come right up here to the markup toolbar. And if the markup toolbar isn't showing, um it's it's right up here it's it in this case it's under the disclosure triangle now if i expand the window a little bit you'll see it it's this little round circle with what looks like a, a marker tip in it and uh, if you click that it turns off or click it it turns on and one of the items here is insert signature right we talked about this before and if I click this, you'll see a few of the signatures that I put in here in the past. I've got my initials, I've got my signature, and I've got 
other signature because I didn't like the first signature, you know how that works. Uh, and you can also create a new signature. Uh, well, since these are stored in preview, I can just click any one of these and boom, it goes into my document. Wonderful. That's That works exactly the way I described it to you guys last time. Now, here's the problem. I had another signature I wanted to insert into a document, but as I mentioned, I didn't want to necessarily go through the process of signing a piece of paper or having, in this case, it was another person sign the piece of paper and then scan the piece of paper and have their signature. I didn't want to do all that. I just wanted to, I just wanted to insert it. I just wanted to insert a, a signature into the document. Simple, right? Nope, not simple. So let me switch to full screen here real quick just so you can see what I'm doing, and then I'll I'll switch back to the close-up view. All right, so I have a signature over here, and if I quick look it, you can see, there it is, fancy signature, Mike. All right, I wanted this signature in the PDF. So I thought, it's a Mac, right? I'm going to just take this signature and drag and drop it into the document. It'll work perfectly. Drag, drop, whoop. Hmm, I must have done it wrong. Let me try that again. Drag, drop, hmm, doesn't work. Dang it. Okay, how do I get that signature in there? So what did I do? I went to the, the menus, right? Go up to the menus. File. Hmm. No insert, I don't see insert there. Let me go to edit, edit, oh, insert. There's insert, insert, oh, insert page from file, insert blank page. Well, I don't wanna do either of those. I want to insert an image. I wanna I want to take this image and I can do it with the signature here. I can insert an image. Hmm, how do I get an image in there? You can't, you can't. Believe it or not, with all the wonderful markup tools that exist in preview, for PDFs, inserting an image into the PDF is not one of the options. You just can't do it. Other PDF viewers, you can. Preview, you can't. But I wanted to solve this problem. I figured there had to be a way to do it. Little, little internet research, little internet research, and I found out there's a trick. <laughs> this is so weird. It's so weird that this is how you have to do it. But the trick, in case you ever need to do this yourself, the trick is to open up the signature in preview. There we go. All right, cool. Now you, you command A to select all. All right, now you can see, you can see here, let me see if I can make this better here. There, okay, you can see the little marching ants going around the, Going around there, I, I command aid, I select all. I did a select all, which you can also do by edit and, and select all from the menu, which you can't see in this, this zoomed in view, but edit, select all, or command A to select all. And you see, I have the grab handles and it's marching ants. Okay, great. Now I can copy and paste, right? So I press command C and I come over to the document and I command V and doesn't work. Dang it. All right. Now what do we do? Well, here's the trick I found. The answer to this is the most bizarre answer. I, I would never have come up with this on my own, but some brilliant person <laughs> opened Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. There's always an answer. But remember, the 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 tips here that I'm giving are native to the Mac. This is a native solution. I, I like to use the apps that come with the Mac as much as possible. And you're right, preview, PDF pen, there are lots of other options for inserting images into a document, but I wanted to make this work. Gosh, darn it. I like to solve problems. No, I'm not getting angry. I'm not getting angry at Apple for making this difficult. All right, so I've got it selected. I've command seed. I've command V'd, that didn't work. The trick is to command C, once you select all, command C, then command V within the same document. 
within the signature preview document. Boom. Now I command V. Now you see I've got two in there. Now I can command C, the second one, the one I pasted, and I can come over to the document and command V, and it goes in. Why I couldn't just simply copy the original and put it in, I have no idea. Why, I don't even think Apple knows this is a thing. I don't, I, I, I have no idea. But isn't that bizarre? That is the most bizarre thing I've ever come across. But if you ever need to enter a signature into preview, and you don't want to go through the process of saving it to your, your markup menu, this is a way to do it. And you learned it here second or third. I don't know. It, it, it took me a few searches to find the answer to this. But that's how you do it. You open up the signature in preview. You command C. You command V within the same document. Then you select the copy. Command C. Come over. Command V. There you go. There you go. That's the answer. Told you it was a weird one. All right. A lot of these are a lot more straightforward than that one. I promise. Okay. Let's close out of this. Now, here's a tip. This this is a fun one. I shared this on my podcast. I had Jeff Gamet on my show as a as a guest a few few months ago. And we were just sharing tips back and forth of things you can do with the with the Mac and Mac OS and all that. And uh, I shared this one. And uh, he kind of had the reaction that I had when I learned about it. He said, I had no idea you could do that. So I'm hoping someone listening tonight has that same reaction because I think this is pretty cool. You can quickly jump to any folder on your Mac with just a couple quick keystrokes from your save dialog box. So now we've got this document, this test document open, and I'm going to go to, now you can't see this because I'm going to hold down option and I'm going to get save as in my file menu. So that's a quick tip. If you didn't know you can get save as still, you can by holding down option in the file menu. Once you hold option down duplicate, turns to save as. So I'm going to go to save as. Okay. Here's the tip. Hit the slash key on your keyboard. The forward slash, the one that's under the question mark on the US keyboard. Hit the slash. And look what you get. You get this awesome little box that allows you to type in exactly the location on your Mac that you want to go to. Now, that's neat, that's neat and all, and you can even use the tilde. So if I wanted to go to the photos folder within my home folder, the tilde is kind of a shortcut to represent your, your home folder. So I could type that in and I could type in another slash and I could type in photos and that's cool and I could do that. But you kind of have to know where you wanna go. You have to know the path for where you wanna save this. But here's the thing that Jeff and I discovered while we were talking. If you notice down below, I'm pointing like you can actually see my finger here. If you notice down below, I typed in the slash and it says go to Macintosh HD users, applications, library system. Great. Let's arrow down to users. And you can see it's kind of grayed out, but you can see it, it put users in there. If I hit the right arrow, boop. It automatically fills in users. And now look what it shows me. Shared, mPotter, MacStock. The two users on this computer are mPotter and MacStock. So I can arrow down to mPotter. And you can see it puts in kind of a grayed out version of it there. And I hit the right arrow and boop. Now it shows me what's inside mPotter. Downloads, Dropbox, local sites, movies, documents, desktop, etc., etc., etc. I was using the example of photos before, or pictures. I, I don't know why I said photos, pictures. 
boop. And now I get the subfolders of pictures. This was not in the original tip, but it's something that Jeff and I discovered as we were playing around with this on the fly while recording the podcast. And I thought that was super cool. So the original tip was, yes, you can hit the slash and you can type in exactly where you want to go on your Mac and it'll it'll pop you right into there in the in the save dialog box. But you can also use your arrow keys and let the Mac tell you different options for where you would like to go. And I thought that was pretty cool. So you kick it all off with the slash. You hit that forward slash. And it starts the process of allowing you to go anywhere on your Mac, from Macintosh HD to users to applications, library, system, etc. So that was my second tip. I thought that was pretty cool. And I did show you guys in a previous uh, one how you can drag and drop the the folder from a finder window over to a save dialog box and pop right in there too. Well, this is another way to do it. Okay. Let's revert changes on that guy. And let's go to the notes app. I hope I have enough for 45 minutes, Linda. <laughs> if, if there are any questions as we go along, just let me know and we'll we'll interrupt things and, and we'll keep going. This is a fun one. Um, I don't ever recommend, obviously, keeping your passwords in notes, but we all know someone who does it, right? We all know someone who keeps their passwords in notes. Or worse, do you guys know anybody who keeps their passwords in their contacts? I do. And I try my hardest to convince them not to keep their passwords in their contacts app. And they still do it. Notes is better. And the reason notes is better, if you're going to do that, if you're going to use something other than Strongbox or 1Password or what have you to keep your passwords, Bitwarden, here's the tip that'll help keep those passwords safe. This is a note, super secret stuff. We're gonna just assume this is all my password. So, you know, while you guys are recording this, make sure you write down my banking password there. It's the third one down. It's the third one down. You'll see it right there, right? You'll notice in the toolbar up here, there's a little lock. It's a little lock right there. And we can encrypt this note. If I click that lock, you'll see that one of the options I'm given is lock note. If I click lock note, when you click the lock and you say lock this note, you're gonna get a prompt and it's gonna say, do you want to lock this with a custom password or do you want to use your login password? Do you wanna use your touch ID? You can use your touch ID or you can use the login password on your Mac. So you have that option to use your login password or to use a custom password. I said, Cool, I'll use a custom password. One, two, three, four. That's what I typed in. So you ha you will be prompted. You'll be you'll be given the option to use your login password and touch ID and or touch ID, or to use a custom password. I used a custom password only because my thinking is if I've got a note locked in here and my Mac is unlocked and someone is in notes. Right? So how did they get in there in the first place? How did they get into my Mac in the first place? Well, they probably knew my super secret password for my Mac, right? Or they stole my finger and unlocked, I don't know. But I, I suggest, I suggest using a different password for your notes. So use something secure, store it in one password, store it in Bitwarden, store it in Strongbox, store it someplace secure, but use a different password than the password that unlocks your Mac. That's my suggestion. Now you can, you can use Touch ID, and that would be, I presume, a little bit more secure because now they do need your fingerprint to get in there. But my my take on it is to use a different password. Anyway, so use custom password. So my, my super secret custom password for this demo was 1234. 
Now you know it. When you get my Mac, you can get into my super secret notes. Um, so now that it knows that, every time I click to lock a note, it's going to use that same custom password every time. Cool. You can also remove a lock on a note. Boom. Now, you may have noticed, or you may not have noticed, that as I locked a note, it puts over here a little tiny lock icon next to the name of the note, next to the title of the note over here on the left. Likewise, if I lock this note, we're going to get a little tiny lock. Now they're both unlocked, and it tells us they're unlocked right here. It says unlocked, unlocked. And I can close all locked notes. Boom, and they go locked. We go back to our super secret stuff. This note is locked. Enter your notes password to view this note or your Mac password and or touch ID. I'm going to put in one, two, three, four. And we're unlocked again. So if you're going to store sensitive information, and again, I don't recommend passwords, but if you're going to do it, okay, at least put a lock on your notes and lock anything that might be um, uh, sensitive that you're keeping. It could be client information. It could be uh, information about your medical history. It could be um, you know, anything, anything that's of a sensitive nature that you don't want a casual observer to come across and be able to read, lock those notes. All right. That's kind of handy, I think. I think that's kind of handy. All right. Now, ooh, while we're in our super secret stuff, Let's put something in here to let people know that it's super secret. All right, how do we do that? I'm gonna use emoji. I'm gonna use emoji to tell people this is super secret. Don't look in here. Now, I use a, a third party app. Now I, I told Linda, I promised this was all, no third party apps. So this tip doesn't cover this third party app, but I am gonna tell you about this third party app because it's pretty darn awesome. And I love using it all the time. I'm going to switch to um, full screen mode just so you can see it. Okay. This is an app. I actually talk about this in my podcast all the time, too. It's called Popcar or Popcare, however you want to pronounce it P O P C H A R. Uh, relatively inexpensive app. It sits up here in your menu bar. And when you click it, look at that. It gives you all the characters of the currently selected font. Now I happen to have Apple color emoji selected right now. So, you know, that's what it's showing me. And if you want to look at any of those more closely, you just hover over it. It shows you uh, a zoom view of it. It shows you the HTML code for it, um, tells you the keywords. You know, this, this particular one means sympathy. Really? Okay, sure. Dazed, okay, that I get, dazed. Begging, mercy, puppy eyes. Okay. <laughs> it's really kind of funny sometimes to go through the emoji and see what descriptions are on them. Disappointed, meh, skeptical, unsure. All right, fine. Okay, cool. Now, you know, one some of the neat things you can do about this is you can um, uh, set favorites. And every time you open up Popcar, those favorites will be at the top. And you may notice that if I go into, say, Ariel, some of the recent characters I've used might be the Euro symbol or the degree symbol. And of course, you know, you can, you can memorize option shift eight if you want to get the degree symbol, if you use it frequently enough. Um, I happen to use the cent sign fairly frequently. So, you know, I know it's option, option dollar sign, right? It is option dollar sign. I just do it out of memory here. Yeah. Option dollar sign. We get the cent symbol, you know, so if you use a, Often enough, you can memorize the keystroke for it. But if you don't know it, use Popcar. That's cool. Now, um, this is great because, as you can see, I can go into any particular font and I can see all the characters for that font. That's kind of an ugly one. Um, ooh, 
here's a fun one, arcade. Um, look, you even get little little space invader ships in there. You can discover things about fonts you didn't even know that existed when you use Popcar. But that's not my tip. That's not my tip. I just love Popcar and it's fun to play with. My tip is I want to insert an emoji here and I could use Popcar for that, but there is a keystroke on your Mac and uh, my co-host Eric pointed out that it's a different one for him, but what he's referring to is um, function, function E right here. It says emoji and symbols. Cool, great Eric, but that wasn't my tip. Uh, my tip is on your, your keyboard, Let's come back to notes here real quick. On your keyboard, you can press Control, Command, Spacebar. Boop. Oh, I had to be in the document. I didn't give it focus. Okay, so I'm in the document, Control, Command, Spacebar, and look what I get. I get this awesome little dialog box, much like the, the dialog or little pop-up window, much like what you get when you want to type an emoji and messages or whatever. And you can search, you know, danger. What does danger give me? Yeah, there we go. Boom. I can insert that in there. And I can also control command space and I can put like a some stay away face like that. Cool. Super secret stuff. I could probably find a lock in there too. But the other thing you can do while you're in here is... Oh, we can't see the, the, the dialog box. Oh, no. You can't. Well, that's not good. Thank you for letting me know. Well, back to full screen it is then. Okay. Control, command, space. Now, I have to switch back here because, there we go. So, control, command, space. Now you can see it, right? Okay, cool. And I'll just cover that again real quick. I can use the search box at the top to search for something. Squirrel. Isn't there a squirrel? Yeah, there's a squirrel right there. Boom. And I've inserted the squirrel. Control command space. And you can go by category. Sports. You know, just just like when you're on your phone or in messages on the Mac. Now, the the neat thing is you can click this little symbol right there. And I'm sorry it's so small, but that's what happens when I have to do full screen. And that gives me this, the full character viewer. And you can see it's highlighted on, on emoji, but I can also go to arrows, bullets and stars, currency symbols, Latin, math symbols, parentheses, pictographs, punctuation. And I kind of skipped right over there because I couldn't, letter-like symbols. <laughs> aren't, aren't most symbols letter-like? I don't know. Letter-like symbols. So, yes, just by clicking that little that little button right there, you can go from the emoji picker to the full character viewer. And I thought that was pretty cool. Especially if you want to do stuff like insert a copyright symbol or a trademark or what have you. So, command control space is the keystroke that unlocks that for you. or control command space, however you want to think of it. Um, you know, the weird thing was for um, Eric, the reason he said, no, it's not that on my Mac. I know it's not that, and he would press it, is because he had a third-party app installed called LaunchBar. And he set up LaunchBar to launch with control command space because we all know the command space. Oh, and you don't see that either. Nope, you don't see it. It's not showing up. Well, it's Spotlight. Now that's weird. Why is that not showing up at all? Huh, 
must have something to do with Zoom and Ecamm and all that stuff running. Well, anyway, we all know that Spotlight is command space. So he set up launch bar to be control command space. And that, of course, interfered with his ability to use this emoji picker. It was a whole argument on the show a few weeks back. No, I swear, Eric, this is what it is. No, it's not. Okay, fine. All right. There we go. Well, I might fill up my 45 minutes. I might do okay with that. Okay, here is... Let's do this. Now, this is kind of a neat tip. I think many of you will probably already know this. It's fairly new to Mac OS. Um, in fact, uh, I believe it, it requires Sonoma. I believe this requires Sonoma, now that I think about it. But it is the ability to take a website and turn it into an app on your dock. And this is pretty cool. Now, you might not want to do it with your group's website. Maybe you do. It's kind of a, it's kind of cool though. So if I'm if I'm on the Silicon Valley Macintosh user group's website and I want to turn this into an app on my dock, switch back to full screen for you. I'm going to go up here to the file menu and click add to dock. That's it. That's all you have to do. And it turns it into its own little, its own little app. Click add to dock. Comes up with a little, I don't know where it got that icon from. That might be your fav, favicon or fav icon on your site. I'm not sure, but you can change this. I can click this and I can change it and, and make it something different. Um, maybe I make it my, uh, Uh, it's not going to let me. Ah, never mind. I was going to pull up that mic signature and just be silly, but you can change it. You can get a little, little icon and you know maybe make it your Apple from the logo or something like that. You can change the name. Right now, I'm just going to leave it. Silicon Valley Macintosh User Group. There's the URL, and I'm going to click Add. Now, you. It already exists because, again, I was just making sure everything worked the way I was going to tell you it was going to work. So I'm going to replace it. And if you can see it on my crowded dock down here, there it is right there. Silicon Valley Macintosh user group. Now, it's still running in Safari, but watch what happens if I click this icon. It launches as a whole separate app on the Mac. It has its own title bar up here. Look at the menu bar at the top, Silicon Valley Macintosh user group. It is in effect, its own little app on the Mac, sitting on the dock, just waiting for you to launch it. Now this is great for things like Gmail. This is great for things like social media sites, things where you don't want to take up a, a tab in your browser, but you still wanna have it kind of running in the background. Now, I use an app on my Mac for um, Gmail that's no longer supported. It's no longer around. It's called Mailplane. And Mailplane is great. I'm not going to launch it right now. But Mailplane is great because it's eff effectively a wrapper around the Gmail website. And uh, I believe he's using Chromium. I believe he was using Chromium or the, the, the engine that drives Google Chrome and Edge and you know, Opera and all the other Chromium-based browsers. I believe he's using Chromium for that, but he's no longer developing it because Google made some changes, as they do, that made it difficult for him to continue maintaining the app. However, think how cool it would be if the, if, when, when Mailplane stops working, think how cool it would be. I can still, in effect, have the Mailplane-like experience just by going to gmail.com and using add to doc. So this would be great for that. It would be great for things like social media sites. Add to doc. I'm gonna add this Mastod my uh, Maxdocs Mastodon instance. Boom. 
add it to the dock. Now I've got another app down here on the dock that represents that website. So I just think this is a really awesome feature. It's not necessarily new in the world of browsers. I mean, this kind of thing has been around for a little while, but it's definitely new to Safari and it's new to the Mac, uh, new to Sonoma. And uh, I think it's something that a lot of folks can really take advantage of. So that is another tip for everyone. Now, um, this last thing I wanted to mention, because I see that we are getting very, very close to my 45 minute time here. This is a this is another problem I had to solve. Now, I don't know how many of you will ever need to solve the problem like this or solve a problem like this, but it's something that I had to solve. And it was um, a keynote issue. So at MaxDoc last summer, we have uh, actually every summer, um, every summer we can get them get him down, Wally Chowinski hosts the um, Max Doc Film Fest. It's a blast. And he puts a lot of effort into gathering these short films that people who attend make on their own. He puts them together in a keynote presentation, and then uh, he uses that keynote presentation to show, to debut everyone's short films at Max Doc. It's, it's really quite fun. Well, when Max Doc was over, uh, I wanted to um, take some of these videos and put a better version of them, not the keynote version, but a better version of them in the digital pass or the the uh, version of Max Doc that people can watch after the fact. And I did I, I realized I didn't have all the original footage. It was buried into this keynote file. And this is another one of those things where I thought, oh, well, this should be super simple, right? I'll just open up the keynote presentation that that Wally gave me, and I'll just I'll just drag that out. I'll just take this this movie that's in here, and I'll just drag it to no, hmm, I can't do that. Um, maybe I did it wrong. I'll I'll uh copy and nope, can't paste. All right, how do I get this out of here? How do I get this movie out of here so I can put it in the digital pass? Gosh darn it. Well, yeah, there's there's no obvious easy way to get it out. You go to the export menu and you think, well, export, right? Export movie. No, export movie exports the entire presentation and it exports it as the presentation was designed. It doesn't export that one little thing I want out of it which is the movie embedded within the slide. But it turns out, unlike that preview issue with signatures, this is actually quite simple to do. And once you know the trick, it's pretty slick. And you wonder why this wasn't in preview for adding signatures. But anyway, I am on this slide. This is the short film that my wife put together. And uh, I'm on the slide, I've selected the movie, the movie that Wally put into this slide. It's now selected. You can see I've got the little grab handles here. And it really doesn't matter how big it is. I can make it smaller or bigger or whatever. It just has to be selected. And then over here on the right, you see we have a couple options. We can style it, we can arrange it. But then here's this option in the middle, movie. Okay, I can replace it, and I can see the file up here. Look at that little icon just to the left of the file name, and I don't know if you can see this. Just to the left of the file name is a little tiny icon for that movie file. And I can just click and drag that to the desktop to export the movie to my desktop. It's that simple and that that was a game changer for me once i realized that i didn't have to keep around all these extra versions of the the video files and all that i could just take wally's keynote file drag out the the uh movies that i needed insert them into the digital pass and i was on my way super simple super slick but boy did that take some searching to find how to do that but that's it
And it's, it, you know, it's one of those things. It's not super obvious, but once you know it's there, it's good to know it's there. So if you ever need to get something out, that's how you do it. And that, that was my last tip. I have a couple others, but that was my last tip for today. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Anyone have any questions about any of that? Uh, please go ahead and put your questions in the chat. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Chat. Was I just ignoring everybody? Let's see. No, that was no, all interesting. Sure. Thank you. You know, that's a good that you know, that's a uh, good comment there. Uh, not that cheap. Pop car is $35. Yes, it is $35. Um, the renewal or not the new old the upgrades are actually quite reasonable i think i just upgraded for something like 14 dollars. i think it's 50 percent off on the upgrades and i'll be honest i didn't pay 35 dollars the very first time i got it i think i got it in a bundle so that type of thing you know if you if you like or you know, look for black friday sales black friday sales are great for companies like this uh, companies like Argonus that makes Popcar, they always do Black Friday sales and other seasonal sales. So if there's an app that you think, uh, you know, you've trialed and you think you uh, would like to purchase, but eh, 35 is kind of kind of pricey, I don't necessarily disagree with you for what it is. In my case, I use it so much that it it the original purchase price made it worth it for me. But um watch for sales watch for sales and and you'll always get a good deal on them um yes uh does a web app behave exactly the same as a safari page yep pretty much pretty much it's a it's a website within a, a safari wrapper really uh just it it's pretending to be a standalone app basically um but yeah, you can launch it separately and quit it separately and and not even have to keep Safari running because it's its own own process running on your Mac. So super cool. Um, let's see, anything else? Can we make a fill in preview deck? Yes. Um Do you use any of Microsoft's programs like Excel and, and uh Word. Do I use them? Yeah. Yes, yes, I do. Yeah, I use uh, I use a combination of um, Apple's Pages, Numbers, Keynote, um, Microsoft Office, and I also use uh, LibreOffice. Yeah, I use. Just depends on the situation. Well, I, I I I was brought up in the DOS world, and then when I first got the Mac, uh, you know, I had Multi Plan coming out of, uh, and I've been awesome. following them, but I'm I'm getting older now. And uh, uh, they want me to upgrade. They don't put the price in what it's going to cost me, you know, because I, I can use my present one as long as I, and I'm not in, encouraging going up to any more. I have iCloud to back. Hey, Coach, just a minute. Damn dogs yelling. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, that's why I keep my door closed to keeps the cats out. I just I just closed mine. <laughs> anyway, uh, they they want me to upgrade all all three things, and uh, uh, I just don't. And I think part of this thing is going to force me to go to Microsoft's cloud, and mm. I don't want that. All I want is the programs, you know, because I've been used to it that way. Good news. Good news. Uh, Office 2024 is coming out uh, in a few months, I think this fall, and there will be a standalone version of it. I just just read that news article the other day. Okay, good. I'll wait. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, I th so I think the current version is what Office 2021 or something like that. Mm -hmm. I I do subscribe. I'll be honest. I subscribe. I get the family plan because I have. Um, you know, Mac to my right. I've got this Mac. I got the Mac at the office. I got my wife's Mac. We, it, it's, it is more cost effective in our case to subscribe and stay up to date than it is to purchase outright, where the purchase outright is of one, one computer license. Um, so for us, it's more cost effective. I did the math on it and more cost effective to get the subscription mm -hmm. 
assuming I would want to upgrade every few versions, not every version, but every few versions, yeah. I made the assumption that I would upgrade at least once over the course of five years. So I looked at what's it going to cost me for five years of subscription, and then what's it going to cost me for five individual licenses and upgrades within that five year, and it's way cheaper to subscribe. But cool. for one person, you know, one one user, one computer, way better deal to purchase outright. Okay, because uh, the I I have it on my iPhone also because sometimes oh. I want to spreadsheets on my so that yep. makes two instruments. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, yep. Yeah. Unless I can upgrade the my uh, desktop and then and then uh, leave this alone and it'll still read it and I can still handle it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a newer version versus an older version. You know, if you don't do anything that's Microsoft specific, um, you might want you might want to give this a try. LibreOffice, yeah. I'm a big fan of this. I, I'm a big fan of open source software in general, uh, but this is a fantastic Office suite. They make a great Mac version. They make a Windows version, Linux version. Um, there isn't a phone version, but you have pages, numbers, and Keynote on your phone. And the only tip I would say then with uh, LibreOffice is to change the default save as setting instead of saving everything in the open doc format, save it in the Microsoft format. And right. then, you know, with that being your default, then that makes it very easy to save it to, you know, uh, iCloud drive or something right. and then opening it open it in pages on your, on your phone. So it also has uh, Libra also has a Visio uh, compatible version, which Visio is not available for uh, Mac. So it does. I, had some, uh, I had some Visio files I was able to to bring well, Libra, in. So. Libra Office, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I I've used it. It's 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 yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's 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 very good. And uh, there's also yeah, a there's also a project version. I um that's, uh, com that's compatible with Project. Many, many years ago, I had kind of the same situation as you. I had some Visio documents and I, you know, I was using the Mac more and more as my work computer. This is mm -hmm. when I was working for someone else. And um, I ended up getting OmniGraffle. Now, that is not cheap. Uh, talk mm -hmm. about expensive software. That's not cheap. But that was at a time where I could go to my boss and say, I really need OmniGraffle because you want me to work with all these Visio documents. So... That was that was great that I could get you know work to pay for it, but if you don't, yes, LibreOffice is fantastic for that, absolutely fantastic. Um, the other thing it's really good for is opening up old and I mean old word processing documents. Mm -hmm. My first word processor was was WordStar. I use WordStar all the time. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That yeah. What about um, oh, AppleWorks? Uh, I I think it will open AppleWorks. I think it will. <laughs> if you send okay. me one, I'll test it, or you can test it yourself. Right. But there right. there are some really old, weird document formats that LibreOffice opens, and it it surprises me every time. Cool. Yeah. And then I, I think it was. Say? I'm sorry. How much did that cost? LibreOffice is free. It's a free download. It's open source. Open source. It's open source. Yeah. Yeah. They mm -hmm. ask for they ask for a donation, and I yep. I forget what the oh, recommended okay. donors donate. Yeah. I donate because I use it. it. It's worth the uh, donation. It's worth a donation, absolutely. absolutely. And then if you're going to use it in business, I <clears throat> I strongly recommend donating to support the project. If you're going to use it just occasionally or just as a you know little little lark or something, but I just clicked on donate and they're at the one-time donation, $19. That's what okay. they're asking for. So back to the, one of the first tips you did on notes, uh -oh. uh, encrypting, <laughs> encrypting uh, a note. Are you using, yeah. do you end up with just one password for all encrypted notes in your notes folder? Yes. 
That's what we discovered tonight. Yes, it's one okay. I was I mistakenly believed it was a different password for every note, and I was absolutely wrong on that. Uh, it is one password, not oh. one password. It's one password for all your notes. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's kind of a disadvantage, I think. It but, is. It yeah. is. Yeah. Going back to the pop cart discussion, which I always mistakenly called pop char. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought, wait a minute, this has been, this this rings a bell, and I, I just looked it up. So it came out the first year that I bought my first Mac, which was 1987. So, it's been out a long time. Yeah. yeah, so is Typinator, one of their other products. Or, um, wait, Typinator, Typinator, or Type It For Me? I'm trying to remember now which one it is. I think it's Typinator is Ergonus. Mm -hmm. Um yeah uh i i played with all of them typeinator type it for me um and uh, honestly i like i like type it for me better than typeinator i did uh purchase a pair so that that's another surprising thing too they kept sending me um emails saying i could upgrade my typeinator when i i don't i don't have a license for typeinator what are they talking about well, it turns out one of these bundles I purchased years and years ago, I got a license for Typeinator and they let me upgrade to the latest version and uh, cool. So, they're, you know, that's the thing about this company that makes Popcar and, you know, they're very generous with their upgrades. And uh, I did buy the upgrade to Typeinator, but I'll be honest, I like Type It For Me better. Me too. Yeah. yeah me too. I'm still using an old version of Text Expander, which, um, mm. which, um, it's really old. I've had it for years, and um, and it, for what I use it for, it still works fine with Sonoma. Amazing. Grandfathered in to the old license, standalone license. It, yeah, it's it was yeah. standalone license, and it's um, and it, it's not you know not using that license with the newer versions. It's using the old version. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, Good. that's very cool. Okay. Okay, Mike, I think Very we cool. should get you off the hook. Let you